All right, it's Berserker time. I've been looking forward to this. I haven't played this level in a while. I have it like halfway through my speed run, and I think it's been <laughs> like three weeks since I've gotten to the point of getting to play the Berserker. Um, but I love this character, and this is a fun level. So we're just going to go through the strategy I use in the speed run to beat it, and I'll give you all the tips and tricks that I have for this level. Um, let's jump into it. Uh, I love this class. This class is by far my favorite. So normally I take Reckless Offensive. Um, I'm actually really liking Break the Chains, and the next time I play this class, I think I'm going to try Break the Chains. Uh, Break the Chains is really, really good on turn um, on turn one of this scenario. Uh, then Fatal Fury, you got to have Fatal Fury. I mean, there's no point in playing the Berserker without Fatal Fury. That is just an amazing card. Um, a tip for the way it works, if you have 1 HP... You can kill any target whose current HP, any normal target, whose current HP is your level plus 3. So uh, I'm going to be going up to level 8 in this level. So while I am 1 HP, I can kill any target who has 11 health or less, which is actually a lot. Like, having a card that deals 11 true damage is insane. Uh, then for level 4 here, we could take Flurry of Axes or go back for Spike Armor. Um, it's been so long since I've played this level, I'm not even sure if I bring Spiked Armor or not. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go back for Spiked Armor on this level, because neither of these levels are really very good on the Berserker. Um, Flurry of Axes is a good card. Um, I can just never really find the stamina to play it. I would always rather play Glass Hammer and Resolute Stand than Flurry of Axes, and playing three losses is kind of sketchy. We're going to go for Devil Horns. The wounds are really nice. Let's see. We can take off some cards we know we're not going to be using. Then um, Burning Hatred. I can understand why people would take this. This is the card I took the first time I played the Berserker, but... Do Careless Charge. Just try Careless Charge. It is so good. Char Careless Charge is one of my favorite cards in the whole game. Oh, wait, not Flurry of Axes, Fatal Fury. Then we'll go for Bone Breaker. The wound, or the Immobilize is really, really nice on it. Uh, and that's level 8, so that is everything. Um, we could we could level up one more time and get the level 9 card, um, but I don't really see any point in it. Uh, these cards by themselves are really, really, really solid. Um, my favorite part about this build is that we have double immobilize, and you will see why that is so good um, in level 1. And then we need at least one slow card, so we have Growing Rage. That's one of the big problems that I have with the with the Berserker, is that overall, like, you have some fast initiatives and you have some medium initiatives, but, like, you have to kind of take, like, a kind of suboptimal card to get a low initiative, or late initiative. My last, my summoner video is done processing, so that's good. Uh, it probably will, uh, it won't lag us as much while we're in the level. Uh, so all of these perks are really good. Obviously, you want to start with your minuses. Uh, these rolling plus twos are really, really nice. Rolling wounds are okay. Definitely take the rolling stuns before the rolling wounds. The rolling disarm uh, is really good. Probably take that up with the stuns. Um, the rolling heals you can grab whenever. The plus two fires are, are really good, so take these rolling wounds last. Um, but everything the Berserker has in this is, is really, really solid. Then we're going to get what I think is just the most required enhancement in the game, which is adding jump to strength in agony. Um, having jump on this card is just absolutely fantastic because we can use it as a move seven. And it's only 35 gold, so that is really cheap to be able to always go over anything to ignore uh, difficult terrain. Really, really good. It's not required in this level. I have, I have, um, I have beaten this scenario without it, um, but having the jump um, makes the first room slightly easier, and it can account for bad RNG um, in the final room going for the boss. Then after that, let's look at items. We just want Eagle Eye Goggles. Um, I don't really know of anything else you would want to take on this guy. I mean, you could play an Amulet of Life, but Eagle Eye Goggles are just better. Um, Iron Helmet is always pretty good, um, but this is one of the few times where I would really say e Eagle Eye Goggles are, are basically required. Cloak of Invisibility, I'm pretty sure most Berserkers always have one of these. A Long Spear, you're 
You're not playing Berserker without a long spear. Did I get Glass Hammer? I did not gla get Glass Hammer. Which card do I have extra? It must be... Wait, wait, wait. Now I'm really confused. Okay, it's got to be Spiked Armor is the extra card. Spiked Armor goes into Glass Hammer. I'm glad I... Um, glad I thought of that. The the long spear reminded me, just because, like, long spear is so good with glass hammer. Uh, we really want that card. <clears throat> then, I believe it's it's been three month, three weeks since I played this level, so I'm pretty sure we get boots of striding, uh, and then we just want a major stamina potion. I remember that was the last thing that I decided on this level, that, it, that that kind of, like, solved the rest of the level for me. And so we'll just go for a minor heal and a minor cure. Um... Unless I'm going crazy, I can't think of anything else that I would have been bringing before. Um, the minor heal potion will just help us get... Um, we need to be around 20 health leaving the first room, um, which I... Th yeah, that's that's not quite full health, but we just need to be around 20, and then Eagle Eye Goggles can pretty much get us the kill. So uh, Cure Potion can just get rid of Immobilizes for us. It can get rid of a poison from the first room, and then we just use a health potion to heal up. Then we need the major stamina potion to get back our uh, our fast cards, and that's everything. I think we are ready to go. So let's do it. I think it's all the way over on the side here. Oh no, it's in the forest. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> One of the reasons I uh, decided to make tutorials for all these levels is that um, I haven't played a lot of them for a really long time. I've only been playing the ones that are at the beginning of my run. I've just been failing them over and over and over again. I'll beat, like, you know, I'll fail the Elementalist level a couple times, then I'll get a run that beats, like, four or five levels but loses on the Tinkerer. Um, so I haven't played a lot of the easier levels in a very long time. Um, so this is just a good refresher for me uh, for, for how to play the Berserker level. So we're going to go slow here and play Break the Chains. The goal is for these... Um, living corpses to move faster than us and come closer but they can go at 32 and stand still or they can go at 91 and go after us so we can't guarantee anything um but i'm pretty sure that this is a majority of the cards will they will just move towards us um unfortunate that they moved so much i feel like they don't normally move that much um but we can just go to right here we will pull this guy first and this guy second we just want to line them up for ourselves so we can pull him here and we should be able to pull that guy just to right here i'm pretty sure yeah cool uh, and now these guys are lined up perfectly for a long spear so we'll just go fast with something like glass hammer and use bone breaker and that'll immobilize both of them uh well they weren't moving here anyway but we'll just uh, i think this is as good an attack as any to throw the eagle eye goggles onto Hmm, we got a stun on this guy, which is kind of making me want to just stay right here to stay close. Um, <clears throat> they're both wounded as well, so we can kind of just kite away from them, and we'll be all right. So I'm just going to go right here um, just to get closer to this guy, um, and then the plan is going to be to hit him next turn. Um, if they had moved into, like, a really nice pattern where they were, uh, where they were just, like, all in an arc, we could have gone for a Devil Horns. Um, to basically kill both of these guys and to to get a wound on this one. Uh, but that didn't really work out. Um, so let's just go careless charge. Um, let's see. They would need to move... This guy would need to move 1, 2, 3, 4. And this guy would need to move 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we stand right here, they can't reach us. I'm pretty sure 3... Yeah, 3 is the maximum they can move. So right here we'll be totally safe. And then these guys will basically die to their wounds. So we'll just do careless charge top with devil, devil horns bottom. Gives us a good attack on bottom. And they're just moving too, so nobody is going to reach us. Uh, we don't even need to do, like, the push and wound or anything. Um, we could wound ourselves to get that. Um, but we're just going to be attacked for four. And so we'll be able to heal that off with our, our cure potion, our heal potion. And he's stunned, so it's not going to happen anyway. But between our cure potion, heal potion... Oh, that's sad. And a long rest. We were going to be able to heal up to the, the hit point threshold we were going to be looking for. Uh, now every... Oh, okay. Well, I really thought he was going that way. But he dies anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, these guys are both in a good Devil Horns... Oh, well, we'll use Devil Horns bottom. So we'll just run away, and this guy won't be able to reach us. Um, 
So I guess we'll just do Defiance of Death um, top with Fatal Fury bottom. And we'll be able to run away. Hope for some damage here. Oh, man. Unfortunate. Let's get some, like, rolling rolling plus twos or something. Oh, nope. So just go right here, and now the Elite won't be able to reach us. I could have used boots, and now nah, I wouldn't have gotten away in the corner. Really unfortunate damage there. I'm kind of surprised by this, but um, it's all right. These guys we know are both going to die to their wound. And then we just need a tiny little love tap to get this guy down. Man, he dealt an entire... <laughs> an entire tiny bit of damage to us. Um, hopefully this kills. Just need a zero. Nice. And now let's just get next to this door. No reason not to. And we can go ahead and just long rest to remove the poison. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and just cure um, to remove the poison. Now, nah, we'll save the cure. Um, we'll long rest, and then we can health potion if we decide we want to. So we can lose careless charge here. We don't need it for the rest of this level. So our goal, we need to get back to the back here um, and to one-shot the cultist. So we're going to go for a glass. Oh, before we go in, though, we want a set of Defiance of Death. Um, sometimes, um, if I get really good damage pulls on these guys, I'm able to set up Defiance of Death while I'm fighting them. Um, but since we missed, um, we missed an attack, I think, on this guy, um, we had to just go for damage. So we'll just Defiance of Death with a useless top right here um, so that we can't die. And then now we need to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I believe, will get us there. Um, so that's just going to be Strength and Agony with Suffering 1 damage. And we'll go for Glass Hammer. And that feels really solid to me. Ooh, I was wrong. We needed to suffer 2. Um, ooh, and it's a target 1 enemy with all attacks. Uh, but only one of them is going to be, be able to reach us. Let's see. I could just use the boots here. From here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is fine. We can just use the boots. Uh, and then we're going to need a plus two overall, but we're going at advantage, and our deck is really good. Um, if we fail to get this kill, we could just restart round and use the health potion. I probably should have just used the health potion. Um, but since this guy's going to be hitting me a couple of times, I think I'm going to health potion right here. Um... We just need to be at 3 health or less, and we can kill these guys at 10 health. Um, okay, so that one is going to use a charge. Uh, that's going to use a charge. Uh, that's really bad, because we wanted to just Fatal Fury to kill. And now we cannot do that. So I guess I'll go right here and Long Spear with a Bone Breaker. Um, and that way we'll mobilize this guy. And using that health potion was definitely a big mistake. <laughs> oh, another miss, too. And the rolling heal is actually, like, not really that good. Um, I guess at least now I can Fatal Fury this guy and get the kill. And as long as I'm slower than him on the following turn, I can kill him. Okay, good. Perfect. So that rolling heal actually did work well for us. Uh, so now Fatal Fury top with Growing Rage bottom, we can... Um, Growing Rage to move here, kill. Fatal Fury top to kill. Oh, except they're faster and they attack. Oh, and because of the heal, we're not guaranteed a kill. Lose Devil Horns, that's fine. Okay, this has been horrible. Um, don't use the health potion the way I did. Hopefully this kills. Okay. Uh, and I'm pretty sure now I'm going to stamina potion. Let's see what they're doing. He's moving three. One, two, one, two, three. So if we move seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's not enough. Um, so we need to go slower than him next turn. Let's see. Just moving two on the skeleton. So nothing is reaching us here. Uh, so I think I'm just going to not go invisible. I'm just going to long rest to get the boots back. 
because even if we lose two cards to the skeleton on this following turn, the corpses aren't going to reach us. Maybe we have to lose two cards to the necromancer again. Um, the only thing that would be bad is if the skeleton gets his 74. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I do reach because that guy moved forward. I'm dumb. I should have realized that was going to happen. So I should have stamina potion to get resolute stand and strength and agony both back. Because uh, now on a short rest, there was a chance that we lost him. Maybe I shouldn't upload this because I did not play this well. <laughs> and just suffer three damage. Lose a card. Um, get up in there. Oh, I definitely wanted a long rest because we don't have eagle eye goggles for this. Yeah, serves me right. Um, so I just go with growing rage next turn and should get the kill. And growing rage, I think, is slower than all living corpse attacks. It's definitely slower than all living bones, and it's definitely slower than all cultists. Ooh, we're gonna need to do a lot of damage. Well, growing rage is gonna hit really hard though because we have a bunch of lost cards. And then we have Fatal Fury bottom as well. Oh, he's healing again, that's annoying. And 91, but that's not an attacking card. The game's probably gonna punish me for playing so poorly and I'm gonna miss the Growing Rage attack. Let's see. Stop rolling. <laughs> All right. Well, I won. Ugh, maybe I should just do it again. Oh, well, I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not doing anything. Did I use the invisibility cloak? I'm not even sure I used the invisibility cloak. And, oh, yeah, I used it the previous turn. All right, that's the berserker level. I'm going to watch this back and see how it went.